Castaneda has also denounced a wall on the Mexican border, saying that if President Trump persists in building it, Mexico should allow terrorists to enter this country freely in retaliation. Jorge Castaneda joins us tonight. Jorge, thanks all for coming on. So I, I want to read having you me. a really for our viewers who haven't seen this, this is a quote from a couple of weeks ago, you to the New York Times, and you said this, Mexico must say clearly that we will encourage all potential deportees to demand a hearing upon arrest and to refuse voluntary removal, that we will provide legal support on our dime for all arrested undocumented workers, and that we will deny entry to anyone whom Mexico, American authorities cannot prove is a Mexican national. This seems like a change. When did the Mexican government develop this concern for due process? Well, it's not the Mexican government. I am not a government official. I left the government 14 years ago, and I speak only for myself. I have always been a firm okay. believer in due process in Mexico and everywhere in the world. And consequently, I think that this is one of the most admirable things the U.S. has, and Mexico should use it. I don't recall the United States letting people in who are not, who do not prove that they are American. Well, I don't want the U.S. to deport anybody to Mexico who the U.S. cannot prove is Mexican. And yes, I want to use as much as possible the U.S. judicial system, the court system, and in particular immigration courts and judges to ja jam the system, to backlog it so much that perhaps President Trump will change his mind and stop this ridiculous, uh, unpleasant, hostile policy of deporting people. Today, he even, they even uh, arrested a fellow, a young dreamer in Seattle, Ricardo Ramirez Medina, a 23-year-old who is in the U.S. legally, who has a work permit to work legally. They went after his father, and they got well, him, presumably too, they'll let even him, though they'll, he they'll has a go. written promise. Well, I don't so know if they'll let him go. They, for the moment, they haven't arrested him. So, yes, I yeah. want to use the well, U.S. Living in legal Mexico, system I, I, presumably to you're stop used the to injustices in the justice yes. system. But let me ask you, so you're suggesting, look, as a foreign national, you're suggesting destroying our legal system because you don't think the U.S. government has the right, as the president has stated, to deport people who've been convicted of felonies. And you're saying that they should well, resist, I presumably I wouldn't physically. be destroying it. How, how can I suggest destroying it if what by, I'm saying by is By gumming it up, it. by making it Using unworkable. it is not destroying it. It's you, well, well, of course it making is. it unworkable, that's your If I pour sugar problem. in your gas tank, you can I hire more judges. I, I want to stop people from being deported from the United States. Absolutely. Okay. And the best so way to even do it people, is to US, use the U.S. legal system, the, the justice system. Absolutely. To commit sabotage it's upon the legal system. It's an admirable justice system. Yeah. It's okay. a way of sabotaging and, and you, the legal and, system. And you would, you would, you would take advantage of it. You would destroy it. Okay. okay. No, so let me just ask you I want to sabotage it so it can't be used. Okay, I think one of the uh, undercover parts of this debate term. is the motive of the Mexican Pardon ruling me? class, of which you're a member, you went to Princeton, in all, the motive of the Mexican ruling class in wanting to keep some very large, uh, unknown number, but over 10 million illegal immigrants in the United States rather than Mexico. Now, half of your country lives in poverty. Your, the tax rates on rich people in Mexico are the lowest in the region. My question to you is, rather than destroying our legal system, have you, have you paused a minute to think, well, why are these people leaving my country to go to the country next door? Maybe we should spend some time and, like, build a social safety net rather than offloading the costs onto the American middle class. Has that occurred to you? No. No, it's occurred to me, and I don't agree with you at, at all on that, Mr. Tucker. I think the real issue here is that these are people who have been living on many occasions in the United States for 10 years, 20 years. They don't have papers. They may have entered without uh, papers, but they are there. They have children who are American citizens. In many cases, they are married to American citizens. They are law-abiding, hardworking people, and they have. there is no reason to deport them. You want to deport the criminals? Fine, but make sure they're really criminals, not just people but that of a sudden president okay, Trump but, but has you're, you're actually dodging my question, which is of being criminals. No, I'm not dodging. Why are it. they I, those people? No, yes, you are. Because, and have set because down the, roots in the United States. They're there but, already. But why, we can talk okay, about but leave, why did we can they talk about what okay. happens with future flows? You should. You should. Okay. What you should do you is legalize are, those. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me ask. Let me ask my question. If Republicans, you would. Right. I, I get it. I'm the filibuster thing. But, but this is a sincere question. So a, a huge no, percentage of your population has, I'm, I'm has left. I'm stating my viewpoint. I'm not just answering your okay. questions. 
But why not? So you want to spend all this oh, money yeah, to gum up and sabotage our legal system. Why wouldn't you spend money instead? Uh, and maybe so maybe you could pay some more taxes to do this, because rich people in Mexico, and you're one of them, pay very little in tax, to build a social safety net that no. might keep people in Mexico. Half your population is in poverty, uh, and yet you're spending money to keep them here. We're the pressure relief valve for your country. Do you feel good about that? Not to keep them there. That's where, they, that's where they live, where they work, where because they Because your country children, is dysfunctional. That's why. Married. That's why. And by the way, I pay taxes right, okay. in both I pay taxes in both countries, so believe me, I pay. Well, a you hell pay of a less lot taxes in Mexico. I have to pay in Mexico and in the U.S., which is fine. That's okay. the way it should be. No problem with but, that. But, but hold like, on. by the way, all of my my compatriots who are in the U.S. also pay U.S. taxes. That's something you and your network don't often mention. Mexicans, okay. with or without papers in the U.S., pay taxes okay. and very high taxes. But it's still. Now, but look, there's been yes, a lot of study on this, and you, you, you're a college professor. Okay. I'm not going to shout over you. But look, remittances to Mexico are now a more significant portion of your economy than oil revenue. So actually, you need, Mexico needs the money from the over 10 million Mexicans living here illegally in order to function as a state. And my question again is, well, have you let, spent well, any time thinking you, about how to improve your own country your, that people won't want to flee as economic refugees? Let me just straighten out your, your numbers. So let me just straighten out your numbers to begin with. There's about 5.8 million Mexicans without papers. And there's another 6 million with papers who are legal residents of the United States. So it's not 10 million. That's it's untrue. Under that, first of all, million. that's untrue. Secondly, those are the that's official wrong. U.S. Census Bureau. Those are official U.S. Censo, no, Census Bureau figures. No, they're not. Whatever. Okay, figures, but, but and you you're not answering oh, the yes, core they question. Are. Absolutely, they are. The okay. second part okay. of your, your, also, your numbers are also wrong on the issue of how important remittances are. They're very important to many Mexican families, but $27 billion over a GDP of $1.5 trillion, I'm sorry, is about 3% of total Mexican GDP. But you it's don't have to pay the social small. services costs of over 10 million people. Poor people who've left your country. Look, yes or no, and we'll stop at this. Case, has in many has cases, this the social debate, services are paid oh, for in many cases also. They are okay. also paid but for have in many you cases thought about because their families are in why? Mexico. Their families, okay. their I children up, sometimes Jorge, are in Mexico Maybe this also. works. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. I, I urge you to think about that, though. Up next, we'll have a chat with The Washington Post media reporter. The subject, bias in his newspaper. Our, our nominally neutral press has